know you found them. Hello, Danny, good evening. Good evening, teacher. How's it going? Alicia? Fine. Great? Okay. Good evening, teacher. You are in mute. I know. I was asking for someone to close the door. I'm watching the news. <laughs> Okay, that's better. Just me and my little friend. You see him right there? You see him? It's okay. a dog. <laughs> yeah. Uh, he slept. Yeah, he slept. He's <laughs> just dreaming right now. Okay, guys, I noticed uh, you were doing the exercises on the platform and everything. Thank you. Thank you. I know that it's not easy. <laughs> okay. Okay, so I'm just answering to Maria. Everybody's like trying to do the exercises on the platform and we already started the class. So let's um, start talking about yesterday's topic, the last topic we talked about. I wonder if you still have questions about um, that topic, the relative clauses, noun phrases containing relative clauses. First, we saw them as subjects, 
at the beginning of the sentence. Today, uh, well, yesterday at the end of the class, we started the topic as an object. Relative clauses, I really miss, right? Remember? Can somebody give me another example? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. About relative clauses? Relative clauses, yes. Okay, one thing is we, uh, it will be uh, nervous me is uh, uh, meeting new friends. This example. Okay, thank you. One thing I'll be nervous about is having an exam, uh, you said, right? Having an exam? <laughs> Veronica, yes. So, yes. No. I, about having an exam. Ah. Okay, I, 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 sorry, I was kind of paying attention. I'm sorry. <laughs> One thing. Okay, one thing I'll be nervous about is having an exam. Okay. Yeah. So what is the relative clause in that sentence that I just texted on the chat? It will be the relative clause is from I to the verb to be. That's the relative clause. I'd be nervous about is. That's whole sentence is the relative clause. Okay. So today we have to talk about that. Um, so the first part, the first part is a noun phrase, a noun phrase, which is one thing, right? Okay. So today we're going to talk about the second part. The second part of the video, which is as a subject, we covered it yesterday. Today we're gonna go into detail in this second topic from last section, section five. And then we're going to talk about expectations. Okay, so let's start, let's start for once. One, no, no, yes, okay, uh, Jesus, yes, yes, teacher. <laughs> Yoleta, good evening. The, the only three is so difficult. Hello, teacher. good evening. <laughs> I was telling my husband no. <laughs> oh, say yes all the time. Just say yes to your husband. Say yes, yes, honey, yes, honey, yes, honey. Okay, you'll see, he, he will be happy. <laughs> no, I'm just... he have to tell me. Depend, yes. yes. Come on, I'm just trying to help. I'm just trying to help a camarade. <laughs> okay. Okay, let's watch the video and then we come up with conclusions and try to understand this topic better, okay? We'll do it in Spanish and then move on to English really quick, okay? So we can practice. Activity getting lost, which in our oh. previous sentence was the opposite. Hi everyone. By the end of this class, you'll be able to express your feelings towards traveling to other countries. You'll learn how to use noun phrases to do this. In our previous class, we learned how to express these ideas. And what we focused on learning was how to express the, these ideas and using the noun phrases as the subject of our sentence. What we're going to do today is we're going to focus on the right side of this chart and we're going to learn how to use the noun phrases as the object of our sentence. So if you recall our previous lesson we learned one thing I really miss is my mom's cooking and we learned this sort of formula here subject plus relative clause plus the verb to be and then the object the activity. What we're going to do in this lesson is we're going to borrow this object and we're going to turn that into the subject of our sentence. 
Um, so I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep one of those ideas there so you can see exactly what happens whenever we make that particular change. What we want to do is we want to change this statement. One thing I really miss is my mom's cooking into my mom's cooking is one thing I really miss. By the way, it's important to mention, and I think I did not mention this in our previous lesson, that what you see in parentheses is optional. That means that you can either use it or you know, exclude it from your sentence. So one thing that I really miss is my mom's cooking. That's correct. But also if you just say one thing I really miss is my mom's cooking. Either one of those two sentences is correct. Let me write this structure down so you can see what's going to happen whenever we make this change. As I mentioned previously, what we want to do is we want to change this noun phrase that is being used as the subject. That means that the noun phrase, one thing I really miss, is the subject of our sentence. Uh, and basically what we want to do is we want to change that into being the object of our sentence, as you can see here in our next example. So um, the structure is the following. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to have, uh, we're going to change my mom's cooking into that being the subject of our sentence. All right, so let me go ahead and write that down. I'm going to say my, my mom's cooking. That becomes the subject of our sentence now. All right, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm just going to make sure that um, uh, this is quite clear. So I'm going to uh, put in those spaces there. So I'm also going to go ahead and change that color to make sure that we um, see what's happening. Right. So that's in green. The subject is in green. So I'm, I'm changing my mom's cooking, which was the object of our previous sentence to that being the subject of our sentence now. Now, notice that the verb to be also changes in location and the verb to be follows the subject. So my mom's cooking. All right, and that's the verb to be is. Let me change the color there as well. Okay, there we go. Uh, then this follows the noun phrase. All right. So what do I mean by the noun phrase? Uh, well, uh, uh, previously it was the subject of her sentence, and also that would follow the relative clause. So literally, this is what I'm gonna put here. I separated it so that you could see actually what happened there. All right, uh, but the the noun uh, and I I think I colored that differently. So let me make sure everything matches here. All right, um, and that's basically what happened. Just a couple of things changed. Number one, we had to change the object of our previous sentence to that being the subject of our new sentence. So my mom's cooking. Uh, and then that followed the verb to be. So the verb to be follows the subject. My mom's cooking is one thing I really miss. If we look at our previous examples, the ones that we did in our previous lesson, uh, in which we said one thing I'd be nervous about is getting lost. So let's say that I wanted to change this idea and I wanted to use this uh, noun phrase, but now being used as the object, all right? Um, and, and so let me write that idea down. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to change this uh, this activity getting lost, which in our previous sentence was the object of our sentence, and we're going to change it to the subject. So for example, we'll say getting lost, all right? That's, that's uh, That becomes the subject of our sentence, okay? That follows the verb to be, is, and then um, that will follow uh, the noun phrase, all right? So we're going to say is uh, one thing, okay? And then that follows the relative class. I'll be um, nervous about. Okay, so I believe this is easy, right? Bien, eh, creo que está bastante fácil este tema en relación a la posición de las cosas, ¿no? Si ya entendimos que la relative clause es esa parte donde describo 
lo que yo extrañaría, lo que yo verdaderamente extrañaría, lo que, por lo que me pondría nervioso, um, lo que me haría sentir cómodo o con lo que me estaría cómodo. Okay? Recordemos que estamos hablando de suposiciones más que todo. ¿verdad? I'll be anxious about, estaría nervioso por tal cosa, estaría cómodo o me sentiría cómodo con tal cosa. Right? Sí. Teacher. Hey. I have a two questions. I have two questions. Uh -huh. The first uh, is about uh, preposition, for example, about, with, because in some uh, sentences, uh, you don't need. Uh -huh. Exactly. And the, uh -huh, what is the difference in the other? Uh, in some exercise of the platform, the platform, the uh, gerundio, I don't know, say, but el, no siempre se usa el gerundio. Uh -huh. El ING, correcto, no siempre se usa el gerundio. How you know when you have to use. Okay, si lo que va a seguir es una acción, pues va a ir en gerundio. O sea, porque después del verbo to be. Ok, sí se puede. Sí se puede, Verónica. Puedo decir is, por ejemplo, I'll be nervous about is to get lost. Lo puedo poner en infinitivo, pero lo importante es separar. Ok. Es separar los dos verbos. Ya, no puedo decir is get lost. Tengo que separar con to, ponerlo en infinitivo, to get lost, o ponerlo con el presente participio, is getting lost. Okay. Como regla general, no puedo tener dos verbos en el mismo tiempo gramatical juntos. Ah, okay. ok. Then we have, I'd be anxious about. ¿Por qué about? Eh, Digámosle una regla general, después de anxious tendría que ocupar about. Después de comfortable, podría ocupar with, podría ocupar uh, about también. I'll be comfortable about getting a new job. Pero yo no rompería la regla de ocupar el verbo to be. Uh, ya sería otra, otro tipo de expresión. Ya no estaríamos hablando de noun clauses. Me saldría de este contexto. Ok, I'll be comfortable um, about getting a new job. Bueno, no, sí se puede. Okay. About is, vaya, um, one thing I'll be comfortable about is getting a new job because I'm an expert technician. Estaré diciendo una cosa con la que me sentiría cómodo o acerca de la que me sentiría cómodo, que quiere decir about, acerca de la cual, acerca de la que me sentiría cómodo es obtener un nuevo trabajo porque soy un técnico experto, ¿sí me explico? About. Y el with, pues, es con. Una cosa con la que me sentiría, con la que me sentiría cómodo es obtener un nuevo trabajo. It's getting a new job. So, sí se puede cambiar el... el el, um, la preposición, Verónica. Buena pregunta. Eh, by. Hmm. Let's see. I'll be anxious by. Ahí sí ya no podría aplicar el by. I'll be anxious by. Something that I'll be anxious about. Something that I'd be anxious about. I know fascinated. Perdón. Something that I'd be anxious by. Finish the homework. Is finishing the exercises. Something that I'd be anxious by. No. Porque al ocupar by, estás diciendo que te sentirías, por ejemplo, en ese ejemplo, I'll be anxious by you pushing me. Me sentiría ansioso por ti presionándome, o sea, por tener a alguien presionándote. Por. Recuerden que by es por. Y en este caso, por medio de. And we use for. Okay, let's see. I'll be anxious for something that I'd be anxious for is getting paid. 
algo por lo que estaría nervioso también. Se puede. Este ejercicio practiquen ustedes. O sea, ven qué significa cada una de las proposiciones. Me ha parecido excelente la pregunta, de Verónica. Se ha ganado el primer lugar de esta noche. Mira. Las preguntas más curiosas de la noche. Ok. Something that I'd be anxious for is getting my paycheck. Algo por lo que me... Por lo que... Por lo que me pondría... ¿Qué es anxious? Ansioso o ansiosa. Es obtener mi pago. Obtener mi, mi cheque. Right on. For that, I'll be anxious. Por eso estaría nervioso. Ok. Me llega. Thank you. Este, esos ejemplos, váyanselos pintando un tanto, así como en el español, como se los estoy diciendo. Veamos, cambiemos. Uh, ¿Podríamos ocupar for con enthusiastic? Violeta? ¿Buddy? For. For. Eh. Perdón, no escuchan los ronquidos, ¿verdad? No. Es tu trabajo. Yeah. He's snoring. He's snoring. That's weird. Mm, Primera vez que escucho con un perro. Wow. Ok. Como le envidio. Anyways. Ajá. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. What? For curious. Is, for is por. Por. Ajá. Uh -huh. So, uh -huh. dijimos curious. Ojo, tenemos que ocupar el verbo to be luego. Enthusiastic uh, teacher. Ok, enthusiastic, how would you do it? Right, enthusiastic for, for Christmas. Ok, let's see. <laughs> for seasons yeah. Christmas. Vaya, el noun phrase... Sería something, ok, en todos los ejemplos. Something I'll be enthusiastic for. My birthday. Is. My birthday, ok. My birthday. Oh, yeah. Hello. Hello, teacher. <laughs> Welcome. Ok, something I'll be enthusiastic for is my birthday. Algo por lo que me sentiría entusiasmado es mi cumpleaños. Ok, también podría ocupar by. Something that I'd be enthusiastic by is my birthday. Lo mismo con for, si ocupo fascinated for, fascinated by, fascinated about. Fascinated. Ok. And the Christmas is correct or Christmas season like uh, oh, yeah. classmates said? Yeah, yeah I'd be enthusiastic okay. for... Is, bur is Christmas. Is Christmas, is the Christmas season. Christmas. Mm -hmm. Now let's try to use ING in that, those examples. Let's see. Something I'll be curious for is getting paid. I said, um, curious for is hmm, the new neighbors. Something I'll be curious for is the new neighbors. New neighbors. <laughs> the new neighbors. Neighbors. Meeting? Oh, sorry. Yes. Something that I'd be curious for is meeting the new neighbors. Right. You got it. What about some things? Mm -hmm. Plurals. Somebody give me an example. Something. Something. Remember that if we pluralize, we need to use the verb to be in plural too. <laughs> Comodo. <laughs> Comfortable. Comfortable. Mm -hmm. uh, some things are, I'll be comfortable. Are in my bed with this, with this. Yeah, with this weather. With this weather. Mm -hmm. Pero eso es una cosa nada más. Vamos a hablar de plurales. You, a ver. you cannot no. use are. Because Why? you were talking about one person, one one thing. Yeah, that's why I said something. Some things. Some things. Are. Right. Oh, you were talking to uh, Madeline. Yes. Oops. 
Yeah, you were talking to Madeline, I guess, right? Let me. So, yes, using plurals, some things I'd be, un... I'd be uncomfortable. I'm comfortable. Some things I'll be uncomfortable. Is. For. Can I use for in that sentence? Go typing. So, some things I'll be uncomfortable. Can I are. use for? Use are because it's brutal. Yeah. Okay. Give me two situations for which, for which you will be uncomfortable or comfortable. Some things I'll be comfortable for. Mm. Okay. Algunas cosas por las que estaría como are, son are. algunas cosas por las que estaría cómodo son son to have my family to get uh, ok, aquí sí creo que sería necesario en el caso, ejemplo que acaba de dar Madeline, ocupar el presente participio, por cómo suena, ¿no? Some things I'll be comfortable for are having my family near to me, uh, taking my kids to school is closer. Having uh, vacations. Having vacations. Having good vacations. Let's say you're moving to a new town, a new city, and it's close to the sea. It's close to the lake. The school is closed. You know, everything is close to you. And you live in the woods. <laughs> yes. Okay, so some things I'll be comfortable for. So can, you, we can use for, right? But then are, I mean, ING. ¿Se han entendido? Eh, si no, pregunten ahorita, por favor. Eh, for, for, what is the, why Eso's... are you using for? <laughs> exactly. Uh, for? Parece que no se nos había unido Madeline. Eh, vamos a ver, chicos, todos juntos. I need... Um, prepositions so we we said with right and we said by and we said for mm -hmm. we said about about for them these are all the prepositions you can use actually let's see um uh yes violeta very good something having an exam is one thing I'll be nervous about. Hello. Yes. So, something. Some. One. Something. Uh, okay. Your example in the chat. The first example. Uh, having, uh, <laughs> having an exam is one but, thing I'll be nervous about. Yes. It, because you put the example previously. Oh. One thing I'll be nervous about is having an exam. And right and now we were changing the object at the beginning. Oh, so the I, I write having an exam is one thing I'd be nervous, but I miss the about, proposition. The proposition. That, is, that will be about. That's right, correct. Okay, pandemic and environment, this is anxious. Okay, Arabella, now make a sentence. Good job. When the kids are on vacations, um, Alicia, some things I'd be comfortable for are living and walking in the beach. Algo por lo que estaría cómodo, algunas cosas por las que estaría cómodo son vivir y caminar en la playa. Suena, tiene sentido, eso ser el punto que yo quería aterrizar con ustedes. No tendría sentido, ¿verdad? O sea, Esas acciones, por esas acciones, estaría cómodo. Yo creo que la comodidad te la da tener una situación, tal vez. Pero realizar una acción no te puede dar comodidad, ¿o sí? Uh, it depends, I think. For, for, depends. Living, in, for living in the uh, near... Near the beach? the beach? What is that? Uh -huh. But what is so for being for able living? for living, uh huh, near oh. near to the beach? Near for... to the beach. 
Okay. Oh, okay. Living and the... you can use gerunds in this part? Yes, you can use ah, gerunds. Okay. Yeah, but you could say, for example, um, hold on, ya llego, pero. Uh, some things I'll be comfortable for are being, being living and being able oh. to walk in the beach, being able to live and walk near to the beach or on the beach. Ah, okay. Being it's able for the to... meaning of comfortable. No, it's See, the, it, it's exactly. the, this is the problem. Okay, that's the point. Making sense, comfortable. What makes you feel comfortable is having something, not doing an action because of the word itself. I'm comfortable when I'm on bed. <laughs> You're comfortable right now sitting in your house, you know, not, take, not taking the bus to go to the class. Okay, Hello. next, Hello. <laughs> at home, Arabella, when the kids are on vacations, okay, try to build a sentence. Uh, Veronica, some things I'd be comfortable for are drinking chocolate and watching a good movie. Okay, we have two actions there, but related to being comfortable. Yes, I, I did uh, before you say the explanation no but I, let's find it let's find out what do you think guys what do you think some things look at the chat in zoom some things i'll be comfortable for for are yeah. drinking a juice and eating a cookie juice with cookie, cookie. <laughs> i like cookie. coffee and cookies, <laughs> coffee and cookie. <laughs> oh my god Está como mis hijos comiendo, tomando fresco de Jamaica con pan dulce o pan francés. <laughs> what? Ok. Algo por lo que estaría cómodo o cómoda. Algunas cosas por las que estaría cómodo o cómoda son beber chocolate y ver una buena película. Watch TV. Ahí está su respuesta, Verónica, en lugar de for tendría que ocupar with para que comfortable tenga sentido. Algo con lo que me sentiría cómodo. No por lo que me sentiría cómodo. Algo, algo con lo que me sentiría cómodo. Eh, algunas cosas, perdón, con las que me sentiría cómodo serían, son, ya, beber chocolate y ver una buena okay. película. Pues sí tiene sentido, ¿no? Por, con, ok. Ooh, good, buddy. Something I'll be anxious about is fishing, finishing the pandemic. Fishing the pandemic. Sorry. Something I'll be anxious about is finishing the pandemic. Algo por lo que me sentiría ansiosa. Algo acerca de lo que me sentiría ansiosa es terminar la pandemia totalmente. De acuerdo. Ok, Beatriz Alegría. Some things, eh, sin el apóstrofe, some things I'd be fascinating about. Faltó el verbo to be. Fascinating. Okay. Some things I'd be fascinating about are working in the airport and watching or and watch the airplanes. Así sería. Repito, Beatriz. Some things, sin el apóstrofe, I'll be fascinating. Ahí sería con ED. I'll be fascinated about. Okay. Some things I'll be fascinated, fascinated, con ED, about. About. Are. are. Working in the airport and watching the airplanes. Okay. Next, Alicia, some things I'd be comfortable for are having a new job and a new house. Okay, I like that example. Let's take a look at that example. Okay, Alicia's example states, some things I'll be comfortable for 
are having a new job. And a new house. And a new house. Yeah. These are two things I'll be comfortable for. Por las cuales yo me sentiría cómodo. Tener un nuevo trabajo y tener una nueva casa. So, comfortable. Se asemeja a. Seguro, ¿no? Seguridad. Yeah. <coughs> Comodidad. Tranquilidad. Yes. No, comodidad. O sea, comodidad. ¿Qué te da comodidad? Te da. Eh, sí, comodidad, ¿no? ¿Qué dije yo? Com bienestar. <risa> bienestar, bienestar, ajá. Seguridad, dijo. Seguridad, dije, correcto. La seguridad te da com comodidad. O sea, si tú estás cómodo, estás seguro. Te sentí seguro. Sí, ese, ese sentido. ¿Ya? Ok. Esa es mi perspectiva, ok. Pero, de nuevo, si están viendo en esos ejemplos, eh, todo lo que hemos visto en este, en estas uh, relative clauses, uh, creo que ya notaron, ya se ubicaron a este punto y gracias a Dios, vea que ya estamos muy avanzados. Eh, es bueno que vayan notando que en inglés no es textual. O sea, tú le das el significado que tú querés o que tú has aprendido en base al, al lenguaje en español que has adquirido hasta ahora. So, uh, practicing turning around what we learned on the previous lessons, as uh, Violeta was saying. First, we have as a subject, my mom's cooking, right? It was a subject. Then we had the verb to be. Then we have the noun phrase. This is now one thing I really miss. Antes era, one thing I really miss is my mom's cooking. That's the opposite. Lo que antes era el objeto, ahora es el sujeto. Según el ejemplo, ¿ok? So, would you like to turn this around? No, I think, bueno, movámonos. Questions. Questions. La pregunta de Verónica estuvo excelente. Eh... Prepositions. There are a lot of prepositions. Okay. Teacher, no terminé de comprender lo, lo de Verónica. Please explain me again. Yeah, sure. Eh, podríamos ver el video de nuevo, pero vamos a ver qué preposiciones podemos ocupar. With, ¿qué quiere decir? Con. 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 Fácil. Con. Ok. For, ¿qué quiere decir? Por. Excellent. By. Por. 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 Pero por eh, de una manera obligada, si lo quieres ver, for, por, por. con una fuerza alterna. Por es obligado. Eh, es como una fuerza, ok, eh, fuera de tu control. Te está obligando a algo más, ¿sí? Uh -huh. por. por. By. Ajá, uh -huh. by. by. Then we had about. Acerca de. Acerca de. Riding by. Riding by plane. No, okay, you ride by horse, you ride by bike. Okay. You travel by plane, you travel by bus. By bus. Means of transportation. Hey, Jose. Mm -hmm. Riding by. Means of transportation. Okay, ¿qué otro preposition podríamos ocupar acá? Y without, and without teacher, no, it's not. Which, what? Without. 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 Sin. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Pero ahí, ojo, eh, negativo con negativo. Something I'll be uncomfortable without is you. <laughs> oh. Okay. <laughs> algo con lo que me sentiría incómodo, algo sin, ojo, ya me equivoqué, algo sin lo que me sentiría incómodo eres tú. Wow. Uh -huh. Me sentiría incómodo sin ti. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Something I'll, I, Something I'll be anxious, anxious without is you. Algo con lo que me sentiría, sin lo que me sentiría ansioso, eres tú. Si no te tengo, me siento ansioso. Okay. 
Yeah, without, very good. Without, without or without. Without, pero no pierdan el de visa que es negativo. Uh -huh. Any other? Uh -huh. Aclarando a Vadi. Bien, eh, Vadi. Eh, esta, esta parte... Permítanme que se me fueron los controles. Sorry. Ok. Um, of. Of. Algo de lo que me sentiría cómodo, algo de lo que me sentiría curioso, algo de lo que me sentiría entusiasta, de lo que me sentiría fascinado. Is to see him. Y ahí ya puedo aplicar más los las infinitivos. Ya vamos a aplicar uno con of. Ok, eh, bien, va, eh, Buddy, súper rápido. Eh, si no has notado, estas preposiciones se pronuncian antes de... ¿Qué es esto, chicos? Anxious, comfortable, curious, enthusiastic. ¿Alguien ya ubicó qué es cada una de esas Adjectives. palabras? Adjectives. Excelente. Yes, you're perfect. Thank you. So before the adjective, you use... You, you say, let's say in Spanish, you will translate first the preposition and then say the adjective. So, lo que pasa es que nos falta acá el sujeto. Okay, el noun phrase. Uh, since? No. Desde. No. We couldn't do it. Okay. So, let's apply that example of... Really quick. I'll be enthusiastic. Mm, I'll be, the croquet que se aplica. I'll be fascinated of. Okay. And again. Something I'll be fascinated of is. To have children. To have children or having children. Sigo aplicando lo mismo. Having. Infinite infinitivo uh -huh. o, o presente participio. Uh -huh. sí. Something um, I'll be fascinated um, of is mm -hmm. have a family. to see him again. With me? Algo, okay, with with me. Okay, vamos a ver. Algo por lo que algo de lo que, yo sigo diciendo por lo que, algo de lo que me fascinaría es verle de nuevo junto a mí. Aquí. ¿Tiene sentido? ¿Make sense? No. It's to be. No. It's, it's to have. It's to have. No sí. No sí. Ok. And something I'll be fascinated of. Algo de lo que estaría fascinado o fascinada es tenerlo junto a mí de nuevo. Mm. Ok. Todo dependerá de esta preposición. Si tiene o no sentido la oración, Badi, Verónica. Pero creo que el mejor ejercicio es ese que estamos haciendo, ponerlo, ponerlo en contexto en español para hallarle sentido y tomar en cuenta que la preposición va antes del adjetivo en la traducción. ¿Ok? okay. Pero no me crean a mí, búsquenlo en Google. Uh -huh. Really. Ok, bien, guys. Let's move to the last topic. The last topic of this unit. Why did I stop sharing? Okay, last topic of this section, it has to do with expectations. Let me see what's the video length. Hi. Six minutes, okay. I'll play it and stop it as soon as I consider that. That's easy, okay? Let, let's take a look at the video and then we discuss about this. Really quick. Hi everyone. By the end of this class, you'll be able to express expectations, particularly cultural expectations. For example, you'll learn how to answer the following question. 
What are you supposed to do when you go out on a first date? Um, the answer to that question can be, well, in the U.S., when you go out on a first date, you aren't supposed to kiss him or her. And just like the image that you see at this time, what are you supposed to do when you shake someone's hand in the U.S.? Um, what are you supposed to do when you shake someone's hand in, uh, let's say, Japan? And the answer to that question is much different. So that's what we're going to learn in this particular class, how to structure those ideas together. Well, let me quickly present the structure that we're going to follow at this time. What you're going to see is that we're going to express the expectations. We're going to have some sort of situation. Um, and then uh, we're going to express the expectation with either supposed to or it's the custom to, either you're supposed to or you're not supposed to. Um, and so let's look at the examples at this time. When you visit someone, it's the custom to bring a small gift. Of course, this depends on the situation you aren't supposed to arrive early and again this varies among different cultures um, if you want to bring someone you're expected to call first and ask you're supposed to check with the host it's not acceptable to arrive without calling first so let's try to understand this particular idea here what I'm going to do is I'm going to write the structure and I'm also going to um, borrow one of these examples that you see there. Um, let me just make this a little bigger. One second here. All right. Um, I think I, I should have. All right. So what I want to do at this point is just um, point out uh, the following. That um, the structure, the way that it works is either we're going to use an uh, when or an if clause. And what do I mean by a when clause? Well, it's this situation that I mentioned here at the beginning. When you visit someone, right? If you want to bring someone, that's what I refer to when I say a when or an if clause. That's what should be here at the beginning. After that, you should include a subject. Uh, in this case, uh, the subject is you. All right. So the, the expectation is, when you visit someone and then you then it's going to follow the verb to be the verb to be can be either uh, in its positive form or it could be negative in this case it happens to be that it's on its negative form so when you visit someone you aren't uh, then this is going to follow supposed to you aren't supposed to and then it's going to follow the verb so in this case the verb is arrive Okay. You aren't supposed to arrive early. And then finally, it should follow the complement. Let me give an example with another clause. So in this case, I'll use an if clause. So I'm going to say, if the service in a restaurant is good, okay, that's the if clause, okay, then this I mentioned is going to follow the subject. Okay, you're um, supposed to, okay, and then that's going to follow the verb, so you're supposed to leave a tip, and then this is going to be some sort of compliment. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and color this in green, just so you can see that this is the when or the if clause, so in this case it's the, it's the if clause that I'm using, so let me just quickly point that out, right? Um, after that, follows the it follows the the subject and the verb. Uh, in this case. Okay. 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 So, questions. Um, bien, lo que les he estado repitiendo todo el tiempo, no, de que estamos juntos en este um, en esta aventura. Si lo han notado, la manera de José de explicar los, las eh, estructuras gramaticales es bien simple y es la mejor manera. Reemplazar objetos en una estructura, en una oración. Número uno, de, esto es algo que se aprende en un nivel básico y lo digo en español para que lo abarquemos rápido y lo entendamos. Identificar partes de, cada, de una oración es como lo más básico que tenés que aprender. Eh, ya sabes qué quiere decir when, 
¿Qué quiere decir? If el sujeto, ok, you, you, ok. Then we have a verb, visit, want, ok. Someone sería el complemento. Luego, to bring someone sería parte del complemento también. Right? Luego tenemos como una manera de expresarnos muy común en Estados Unidos o en inglés. Ok. It's the custom to. You aren't supposed to. You're expected to. You're supposed to. It's not acceptable to. Podría incluso pasar esa positiva y decir, it's acceptable to. Ok. So let me give you an example. If you want to get married, ¿Por qué siempre habla de parejas? I don't know. So if you want to get married in our country, después vamos a hablar de la India, eh? en El Salvador, if you want to get married with your couple, with your boyfriend or with your girlfriend, give me an example. You have to uh, Ahí está ask la cosa. for the parents. Okay, use the example. <laughs> ask for ah, okay. the parents. Ah. Okay, ah, vamos a ocupar los ejemplos. Espérame, le voy a enviar esto al chat. I'm going to okay. send you this right away. Because I, I know the quality mm -hmm. is not that good. Okay. There you go. Mm. <laughs> okay, now well, I'm going to share again. Okay, so on the chat, you have this little chart that we're looking at here. And you have the examples. So I said, if you want to get married with your couple in El Salvador, and you can use any of the examples that you see on the screen. So go ahead. You are supposed to save money. You're supposed to save a lot of money. Why? <laughs> I don't know. Right. For the reception. Distraction. You're supposed to be reception. <laughs> to be like for the party. <laughs> oh, for the party, yes. If you want to get married, I said, in El Salvador. Mm -hmm. You're supposed to take the girl and run away. <laughs> <laughs> so okay, so then you're not, mm, you aren't supposed to take the girl and run away. You aren't supposed to. You are supposed to be loyal? You're supposed, oh, come on. Fantasy. <laughs> Someone's hurt. Okay, no. Yeah, no, I, just, I did it. I did it. I mm -hmm. went to her. I went to her house. I went to her house and I asked for her hint. I asked her hint. Oh, my God. Okay, so if you want to get married in El Salvador, you are supposed to, okay. What am I saying, guys? How would you translate this? You're supposed to ask her hand. Ask her hand. <laughs> mm -hmm. You're supposed to ask for permission, as, as Alicia said, to the parents. Mm, you're supposed to, you're Give her a ring. Oh, listen to this. What about not you, but the father is expected to? Father is expected to. The father is expected to. You have a job. <laughs> <laughs> no, the father expects you. Oh. The father expects you to have a good job, to be rich. 
The Father yeah. expects you. To be rich. Mm -hmm. Esa es otra forma, es lo contrario. Aquí estamos hablando de expectations en general, pero expects you, cuando alguien ex espera de ti tal cosa, right? To have a good job. To have a good job, to be handsome, to be tall, to be rich. That's what the father of your fiance expects. A great house. A big house, to have a big house. Okay, if you want to get married in El Salvador, the father is expected to pay for the wedding. Or her father, I could say her father is expected. Okay, give me another example. I was talking about India because I heard a lot of things about how they get married, you know. Um, you may have heard about India, right? You have to pay for the cow. When people get... Yes, but no. <laughs> When people get married... Um, married. In, in India, India... You have to, you have to bring a lot of cows. No, it's a not... Lot of, <laughs> goats. <Come on. laughs> Let's respect... Okay, wait. Uh, that's very Act. dangerous. Okay, when people get married in India, your let's use the example. What about their their the clothes? Yes, look at that. Change the subject, the the object of the sentence. They're supposed. They're expected. Um, they're expected to exchange goods. How come? Exchange goods. Remember what's the meaning of how come? Mm -hmm. Como así. Remember, I told you that. How come? Como así. Yeah, como así. Okay. When people get married in India, they're expected to exchange goods. Maybe I should add something else, right? Among families or between families. Did you know that? They exchange goods as, as Violeta is saying, I'm gonna give you 10 cows. Um, you're gonna give me two houses where we will live and I'll give you two elephants. Okay, the more you have, the better. You you were paying for the bride. Yes, basically, because they arrange the marriages. They arrange the marriage of their um of their girls. Or the youngest, let's say. youngest. Or the youngest. But the parties are amazing. Okay, when people get we correct me, come on. When people get married. When people get married in India, they're supposed. Espero que estén notando que estoy cambiando el sujeto, vea. Y eso se puede hacer. They're supposed to wear a lot of jewelry. Did you know that? Hello, 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 hello. And wear red. And where? Oh, in, yes. The one of the favorite colors is red, right? But they they're expected to wear. They're supposed to wear a lot of red, jewelry. Red means red means. Uh, where? Forgot. <laughs> Forget it. <laughs> what red? The color or where? The red color in. Oh, in what does it top. mean? What does it mean? I don't know. Yeah. I forgot. You forgot? Oh, that's really weird. Okay, so these are customs. Good luck. Good luck. Good luck? Okay. And there's there's a whole ceremony. There's a whole yes. ceremony for the for the bride. For the bride. There's a whole ceremony. Um they it's is the custom to wear red. It's the custom to, and then you continue with a base birth. Okay, questions? Tenemos un minuto para preguntas. Alguna pregunta? It's clear, teacher. Bien, vamos a practicar mucho esto mañana y mañana vamos a hacer un repaso 
de ciertos detalles. O mañana quiero que me traigan preguntas concretas eh, en relación a algún ejercicio que no hayan entendido. Sí, algo que quieran un poquito de claridad. ¿eh? Y vamos incluso a poner un reloj por cada pregunta para responderla. Como que les digamos, vamos a tener cinco minutos por cada pregunta que ustedes me dan. La vamos a contestar y la vamos a practicar entre todos para daros nuestra opinión de cada uno de los temas que no han quedado claros, ¿ok? Porque mañana es nuestro último día y les recuerdo, si no lo han terminado aún, yo creo que sí, la mayoría se puso las pilas con la plataforma. Les agradezco y así terminamos pronto esto ya mañana y la, se cierra la plataforma, les dan su certificado Estamos listos para empezar pronto. Madeline, you have one minute. Hey, will you be in the next model with us? I don't know. Honestamente. Ah, I will like. We will like. <laughs> Thank you. Yo lo sé, pero no sé. Eso no nos lo dejan saber hasta el último minuto. De hecho, eh, un ejemplo. Si el curso termina mañana y primero Dios, pues imagínense, empezamos el lunes. Eh, a mí me dejan saber a más tardar el viernes en la noche o el sábado a veces incluso el mismo domingo me están diciendo ay mira, eh, tal grupo te toca o de un solo revisa tu correo y ahí está ya asignado. ¿Me dan los certificados al correo? Me parece que sí, me parece okay. que sí inmediatamente la, la terminan todo y se sacan arriba del 80% la plataforma automáticamente solicita su certificado y ellos lo envían a, a su correo, ok good, gotta go good night okay. I'll see you tomorrow. Watch the video. Tomorrow, Take care. Bye -bye. Alicia, bye. <laughs>